والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Dear brothers, young boys, and uh, sisters in Islam, I thank Allah Azza wa Jal that He has given us this opportunity to sit down here and try to understand who we are, what it is that Allah Azza wa Jal has sent us into this world for, and how much are we ready, prepared to realize the reason, the purpose Allah Azza wa Jal has sent with us in the, into this world. I see that there's a lot of uh, youth here and uh, it of course makes me feel very happy because Alhamdulillah the talk is or the address is to you the youth. Look in any nation at any point in time it is the youth that decide the course of action. It is the youth that have in them the energy, the exuberance, the attitude and whatever else you think. It is the youth that has this, that can change the direction of wind. That's why every nation, be it the Muslim community, the community of others or any department, any field you go, you would see that youth plays a vital role in shaping or breaking the country or the community apart. And unfortunately, very sadly, the Ummah the community of Muslims, not necessarily only in Mangalore, in India, in Asia, no, throughout the world, the Muslim community is right at the rock bottom. That's the sad reality. And that's why KSA decided to organize a meet like this in order that we realize what we are created for and in order that we realize that if we live Islam, if we live upon Tawheed, shall we, inshallah ta'ala, reign supreme. If you look at the Quranic ayat also, for instance, if you look at the ayah from Surah Al-Kahf, إِنَّهُمْ fityatun, fityatun, amanu bi rabbihim wa zidnahum So look at this word, fitya. Similarly, if you look at the very same surah a little while later, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِي فَتَاهُ لِي فَتَاهُ Or for that matter, look at the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and his nation. What does his nation, what does his community say? قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا فَتَنْ يَذْكُرُهُمْ قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا فَتَنْ فَتَا الْفَتَا الْفِتْيَا So all of this clearly points in one direction that the, the youth of the society has to have the spine. And if we don't have the spine, if we are living for this world and not for the hereafter, then it makes no sense that we are continuing to live here. No one cares whether we continue to live or die. Therefore, we must understand, we must realize that we are here 
to make our life count and if we don't live the life on the pillars of tawhid on the principles of monotheism then there's no point living this life you can continue to live as long as you wish and one day you die ma bakat alayhim as neither the earth nor the heavens nor the skies will cry upon you if you do not live your life on the principles of monotheism on tawhid it is this tawhid it is this tawhid my dear friends i'd like to tell you that it is this tawhid that can actually come for our salvation in the hereafter it is this tawhid which you and i may want to desire to say lots of us lots of us may want to say the kalima la ilaha illallah while we are dying and uh, there is a hadith that says yub'athu ar-rajulu ala ma mata alayhi aw kama qala an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that a man is going to be raised on the tenets on the principles he has lived his life on and he is going to die doing the same thing that he was doing all his life so if we have not had enough of tawhid in our bosom in our chest in our practice then when we are going to die you know there is this ayah the second ayah of surah al hijr rubama yawaddu alladhina kafaru law kanu muslimin this it is this tawhid that people would long to live life on i hope i'll be able to talk to you about what rubama yawaddu alladhina kafaru law kanu muslimin means you know the ulama the the, the mufassirin have said that on three occasions this will happen i hope you already know the translation of the ayah because i have heard that lots of you have come from islamic colleges and islamic schools islamic madrasas so i'm very certain that you know the other sheikh just a little while ago talked about rufia al qalam an thalath even before he could tell you the translation you understood the meaning of it therefore i can clearly see that you understand lots of arabic alhamdulillah and that's why rubama yawaddu alladhina kafaru law kanu muslimin look at what allah azza wa jalla has to say those who did not live life on islam those who did not choose to be muslims those who choose to be someone else while they are dying there are three places that they would desire that they would wish wish i was a muslim wish i was a muslim law kanu muslimin i wish how i wish i lived the life of a muslim you know on three occasions like i said the first occasion is hatta idha jaa ahaduhum al maut qaal rabbi irji'un la'alli a'malu salihan fi ma taraktu kalla you know when the death is approaching a person when the when what you call is gharghara when what you call is the the, the sakarat the phase the stage of sakarat when one is almost transitioning between life and death just about to die moments from now if you have seen anyone die like this you would realize you would realize if you have been to any you know anyone that's lying on their death bed you try talking to them at one point you try talking to them they don't talk to you they are looking in a particular direction at this point in time whoever has not been a muslim will say wish i was a muslim wish i was a muslim we are all happy young living enjoying life but are we living lives as muslims and if we are kudos to you alhamdulillah but if we are not then there is a question mark do you want to say this line while you are dying wish i was a muslim hatta idha jaa ahaduhum al maut surah al mu'minun talks about it when the death approaches this person call he says rabbi 
oh my lord irjuruni send me back into this world send me back into this world laalli a'malu salihan fi ma tarak whatever righteous deeds i may have not done i would like to do those righteous deeds can you please send me back into this world kalla that's not going to happen once someone has already transitioned from being a man from being a human being into being a mortal now impossible for anyone to come back to life so that's the first instance people would say wish i was a muslim the second instance when a person would want to be a muslim but he will not have a chance to continue or to to, to be a muslim this again second point allah azza wa jalla says rubama yawaddu alladhina kafaru law kanu muslimin you know when these people are asked to stand right in front of the hell fire right in front of the hell fire they will then say they would realize they would realize that they are going to be sent into this hell fire ya laytana nuraddu wa la nukadhdhiba bi ayatina wa nakuna min almu'minin this is what they would say ya laytana wish how i wish i was a muslim nuraddu they know they know they know that they cannot be sent back into this world again i'm talking about something that's going to happen on the day of judgment when this man who has never been a muslim who has never said la ilaha illallah will on this day say this ya laytana how i wish nuraddu that we are sent back into this 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 world ولا نكذب بايات ربنا we are not going to belie the ayat belie the signs of our lord our lord they didn't even call allah azza wa jal once during this life however on the day of judgment they'd like to go back but they will not be sent back ولا نكذب باياتنا ونكون من المؤمنين not just muslims we would like to be among the mu'minins Muslim, Mu'min, Muhsin, like Islam, Iman, Ihsan, three levels of our religion. They do not want to be here as Muslims. They'd rather want to be Mu'mins, but they do not have a chance. So do you and I want to live life like that and repent on the day of judgment that wish I was sent back into this world? Alas, can I go back into this world? No, we can't. No, we can't. And the third instance a person is going to say a wish wish i i i said la ilaha illallah wish i had said la ilaha illallah the third instance the third instance is when he sees that he is in the hell fire together with some other muslims yeah there are some some muslims that are also going to go into the hell fire to spend life in the hell fire as a punishment for the wrong deeds may allah azza wa jal save us from that amin allahumma amin may allah azza wa jal save us it's not a joke to spend even a even a minute in the hellfire so a person who spends you know a muslim i'm saying this guy is amongst some muslims there are some muslims around him so with muslims there is this beautiful thing it is this beautiful thing with with muslims that whoever has said la ilaha illallah man kana akhiru kalamihi la ilaha illallah man kana man qala la ilaha illallah dakhala aljannah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that whoever says la ilaha illallah definitely ends up in jannah ends up mark my words i'm not saying direct jannah there is no guarantee I'm going to talk about that as well inshallah taala. So this person who is already in the hell fire while there are other muslims who are there with him. You know? In the hell fire. While their names would be called out because they are muslims. Muslims will be taken out from the hell fire one day. So while this person Abdullah leave jahannam. Abdul Rahman leave jahannam. Abdul Baqi leave you know these people who have already gone into hellfire Allah azza wa jalla would get these people to be called out 
and when they are being called out when they are being taken out from from jahannam to take to take them into jannah that's that's the third instance this this person who has never uttered la ilaha illallah even once in his life would say hey how come you are living this you were my companion you were here with me in jahannam how come why 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 are you living why are you living this this person and that's exactly when the reply would be given that you know what once during my lifetime in the world i had said la ilaha illallah so that's how significant la ilaha illallah is and there are people there are lucky lucky people blessed people may allah azza wa jalla make us amongst those people there are 70000 people who allah azza wa jalla is going to send to jannah straight away you know on the day of judgment wa jaa rabbuka wal malaku saffan saffa ulama say ulama say mark my words ulama say that when we are resurrected on the day of judgment when we are standing and waiting and waiting and waiting for allah azza wa jalla to come and start reckoning start the hisab on that day some ulama say that the waiting period is about 2500 years imagine imagine waiting for allah azza wa jalla to just descend waiting for allah azza wa jalla to just come that's when people would go to adam alayhi salam to nuh alayhi salam to ibrahim alayhi salam to musa alayhi salam to isa alayhi salam to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam shafa'a 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 finally when allah azza wa jalla does come after the long wait is over when allah azza wa jalla comes allah azza wa jalla would say 70000 people this this those 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 go into jannah straight away bidun hisab bidun adab no reckoning no punishment allah azza wa jalla would straight away come call out certain names the names of 70000 people and all of them would be asked to get up go to jannah get up go to jannah may allah azza wa jalla make us make us amongst those amin amin allahumma amin and there is this other category that if a person has done whatever wrong deeds in this world with tawhid because the first category that goes into jannah straight away is is on monotheism لا يرقون ولا يتطيرون ولا يكتون these are the people so the second category is of those people whom allah azza wa jalla would take the reckoning would ask them to give an account of their life but allah azza wa jalla will not punish them that's the second category allah azza wa jalla will not want to punish punish and they would also be after their reckoning is over they will be sent straight into jannah may allah azza wa jalla make at least us amongst these amin allahumma amin and the third category i mean of course the second category you know that hadith al najwa a person would be brought very close to allah azza wa jalla as close to allah azza wa jalla as possible so much so that there is no one else that can see him and allah azza wa jalla conversing with each other then allah azza wa jalla would talk to this person hey on this day in your life on that day in your life that night in the college that day in the school you know you did that sin you did this sin do you remember yes allah azza wa jalla remember i forgive you on the next day you did an even bigger sin ya allah azza wa jalla i did i forgive you i forgive you i forgive you so much so that this this person would think on one occasion you know so much so that this person would think no allah azza wa jalla is not going to let me go of this heinous sin this big sin that i did but allah azza wa jalla would say hold on i know that you did this this and this crime but i can still forgive you so that's how allah azza wa jalla would forgive these people and would send them into jannah that's the second category i was talking about and the third category is of the people who would have to give their reckoning hisab and then they will have to spend some time in the hell fire and the fourth category of the people is those who do not have iman islam mithqal habba aw mithqal dharra those who not have, do not have the iman of an atom's weight 
will continue to remain in the hellfire. So you, you and I should know that our life actually is not this life. This is a temporal life. We are going to live this life in order to do well in the next life, which is the eternal life, which is the eternal life. You know, on one occasion, Sayyid ibn Jubair, radiallahu anhu, yeah? Sayyid ibn Jubair was summoned by Hajjaj ibn Yusuf. I'm not going to go into the details of who Hajjaj ibn Yusuf is. Lots of us know who Hajjaj ibn Yusuf was, you know. So Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, one day, summons Sayyid ibn Jubair, radiallahu anhu. Sayyid ibn Jubair goes and he says, I am going to kill you now. You choose how I should kill you. Hajjaj says to you, Sayyid ibn Jubair, and in fact, if I go into the details of the dialogue, are you Sayyid ibn Jubair? No, no, you are not Sayyid, you are, you are Shaqi. This is how he spoke with him. And then he says, you know that I am going to kill you now, I am going to murder you. You choose how you would like to be killed. Then, you, then Sayyid ibn Jubair says, Ikhtar anta wa amamaka qisas. You choose however you want to kill me. Because qisas is waiting for you. Qisas on the day of judgment is waiting for you. So these people, the companions of the Prophet wasallam, would never fear death. They lived this life in order to go and do well in the next life. And we, some of us, think that this life is the only life that we have. So Sayyid ibn Jubair, radiallahu anhu, when he says, Ikhtar ant, you choose however you want to kill me. Then he says, Arsiluka, sa'arsiluka ila jahannam. Sa'arsiluka ila jahannam. Then he says, Hajjaj ibn Yusuf says, I am going to send you straight into the hellfire now. Sayyid ibn Jubair, look at the quality of Iman. Look at the quality of Iman. Sayyid ibn Jubair replies saying, If I knew that sending people to Jahannam and Jannah was in your hands, I would have taken you to be God. I know that you're not God. You can't send me to Jahannam, to the hellfire. So that's the kind of life we are supposed to live. And we're supposed to live life on, like I said, on, on the pillars, on the, on the principles of monotheism. You know, there is this, this person, Hadith al-Bitaqa. I'm sure you know this Hadith. There is this person who has done all sorts of wrong deeds in this world. And this person is going to be called on the Day of Judgment. And, and uh, let, me, let me give you a disclaimer here that this is not a blanket rule. This is not a blanket rule. You and I cannot assume that, okay, that would be me. It's not possible. Look at the, look at the description here. In Allah has said, يُخَلِّسُ رَجُلًا عَلَى رُؤُوسِ الْخَلَائِقِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ When all the people are standing in the, in, you know, on the day of judgment in a gathering, Allah Azza wa Jal would choose just one person. Allah Azza wa Jal would call him. That person will come. All his registers of deeds, books of his deeds would be opened. And back then, you know, the, the, uh, about a hundred years ago or until about a hundred years ago, we, we didn't have books. We used to have scrolls. You know, you know those scrolls that would be open. You can keep opening the scrolls and keep reading, keep reading like that, the scrolls. So scrolls of this man will be opened. And he would have 99 scrolls like that. And each of those scrolls has all bad deeds. And only bad deeds. There's no good deed that he has done. And each of his scrolls, I'm talking about 99 of them. Each of his scrolls, when they are opened, the length of each scroll is as far as his eyesight reaches. That's how many sins he's done. And such a person, when summoned by Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal would ask him this question. Atunkir an hadha shay'a. Do you have anything to say about these scrolls? You know, 99 registers, 99 books of your bad bats. Do you have anything that you say, no, this is not something I did. Do you have anything to say like that? La ya Rabb. No, Allah Azza wa Jal, no. I, I know that I have done all these things. 
Then Allah Azza wa Jal would ask him this question. You know this? مَا يَلْفِغُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ there are two angels writing down every single thing that we do. Even as I'm standing here, speaking here, even as you're, you know, one of that boys, one of those boys, you know. So every single thing Allah Azza wa Jal is recording. So Allah Azza wa Jal would ask this person, hey, 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 hold on, hold on. These, these people, these angels that were here, that were writing down every single thing you did, did they do anything wrong that they wrote down something you didn't do? La ya Rabb, no. No, everything, everything I have has done is here. There's nothing that I have not done and there's nothing that's written here which I have not done. So Allah Azza wa Jal will ask him this third question. Do you have any excuse that no Allah Azza wa Jal, I actually did that sin because I was, you know, I was helpless. I was forced to do this by my friends and I, I, I did not have it. Do, do you have any excuses like that? He said, La ya Rab, no. I was absolutely aware that this was a sin and I did it completely, fully knowing that it was a sin. Then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, A'indaka hasana. Is there any good deed that you have? La ya Rab, no. And then, hold on. Allah Azza wa Jalla would say, hold on. Laka indana hasana. We have a small good deed that you have done we have hasana one good deed that you have then fatakhruju bitaqa then allah azza wa would take out a slip a small slip in which there is something written just one small slip small slip then allah azza wa would say uh, you know you have this this slip in which you have what one deed then this this person says Come on, like we say, you know, you have those 99 registers, 99 books of all bad deeds, and I guess that just one slip. Come on, where is where is the match? Where is the comparison? 99 books, all of them have good deeds, and just one slip. Wait, Allah Azza wa Jal says, wait, uhdur wazanak. Until we weigh it, just wait. We are going to weigh this against those 99. Registers 99 books. So all those 99 books of bad deeds will be put on one pan of the scale and this bitaqa, this slip would be put in another pan of the scale. Guess what? This slip, the pan that has this slip is heavier than those 99 registers. What is it that's written in that slip? La ilaha illallah. So that's how important La ilaha illallah is. And if I tell you, if I talk to you about another similar hadith, Hudayfa ibn Yaman radiallahu anhu on one occasion says that, Yadrusu al Islamu kama yadrusu washu thawb. You know, wh wh while we wear new garments, a few washes later, a year later, a few months later, you know, the, the, the color starts to fade. The embroidery starts to fade away. Likewise, Hudayfa ibn Yaman says that some you know some day a day will come when Islam will fade away like this, and Allah Azza wa Jal would lift the book Quran. In one night, Allah Azza wa Jal would take away the book because there is no one that's interested in, in following the book. There is no one that's interested in, in, in taking up the, the book and taking it seriously. So Allah Azza wa Jal would take up the book, and people would remain. Who would not know Masuyamun Wala Nusuf Wala Salat Wala Sadaqa? People would not know what Siyam means, what fastings are, what Salah is. People wouldn't know that. People wouldn't know what charity is. People wouldn't know what Hajj is. People wouldn't know anything. And only a few elderly people would remain. Only elderly, dig, big, elderly, old people would remain. And people those days would just say, La ilaha illallah. While Hudayfa ibn Yaman radiallahu anhu is narrating this hadith, there is a tabi'i, a wonderful tabi'i called Sulah ibn Zufar. He says, what kind of benefit La ilaha illallah would be? give them when they don't know what salah is what siyam is what nusuk is what sadaqah is 
when they don't know any of these, when they're not doing any of these, how on earth La ilaha illallah is going to save them? When he asked this question to Hudayfa ibn Yaman radiallahu anhu, Hudayfa turns away. He doesn't want to give the reply. He comes from this side and asks him the same question again. What benefit would La ilaha illallah give them when they don't know Salah, don't know Siyam, don't know Nusuk, don't know Sadaqah? So Hudayfa turns away again. He doesn't want to reply. He comes back from this side and asks the question the third time. What benefit would, would La ilaha illallah give them when they don't know Siyam, don't know Salah, don't know Sadaqah, don't know Nusuk? Tunjihim minan nar. The third time, Hudayfa ibn Yaman radiallahu ta'ala who says, Ya Salah, O oh Salah, do you know that this La ilaha illallah is going to actually save them, rescue them from Jahannam, from the hellfire? So it is up to us, it is up to us. Whether we want to do all righteous deeds, being on the principles of Tawheed, today's Muslims, look at them, look at them. You know, right after Fatah Makkah, the conquest of Makkah, right after that, when the Prophet was leading the expedition to Hunayn, on the way to Hunayn, the Prophet wanted to, you know, stay up for some time. So, when the Prophet was passing by a community, there was this community of, of Mushrikeen who had a particular kind of tree and they used to hang their swords, their threads, etc, etc on that tree. The minute these new Muslims, huh, remember, right after the conquest of Makkah, lots of people entered Islam. Lots of people, hordes of people entered Islam at that point in time. They did not have any training, any teaching, any tadreeb, any tarbiyah under the Prophet or any companions. They just had become Muslims. They were only, you know, Muslims who had only recently become Muslims. So these people were accompanying the Prophet on this expedition. When they saw that small tree there, when they saw the tree, on that tree they saw that the mushrikeen are hanging their swords, tying certain threads, etc, etc, called Anwat. Immediately some of these companions said to the Prophet Ya Rasulullah, Ija'al lana that Anwat, kama lahum that Anwat. Can we also have a tree like that? Today's Muslims. Do you not know any of those Muslims that want to have a Christmas tree in their house? That want to dress like a Santa Claus? That want to celebrate Christmas? That want to say, can we say Merry Christmas to my, 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 my Christian friend? When we do not know what Tawheed means, that's when we would have questions like these. When we know what Tawheed is, we'd never ask a question like that. We'd never ask a question like that. So it is, it is this kind of people. We know, we know, the minute they said this, Wallah, Wallah, the Prophet said, Subhanallah. لَقَدْ قُلْتُمْ كَمَا قَالَ قَوْمُ مُوسَىٰ اِجْعَلْ لَنَا إِلَهًا كَمَا لَهُمْ آلِهَا you know, you know, right, right after, after Musa and his, 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 his qawm, his community, his community was, was saved from Pharaoh. Right, right after that. Inna inna you know, you know, you know that, those, those ayat from Surah al So, so, so when, when, they, when they say that, inna inna say that, that kalla inna inna rabbi says, read, read those ayat. So when so they when have they been, been actually, actually saved, saved by, by Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal, when Firaun was, was made, made to drown in, 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 uh, in the ocean, right, right after, after they went on to the other side of the ocean, ocean they looked at certain people who were celebrating, who had certain idols. That's when they said, Ya Musa, When those people in the company of Musa and when, and when certain, certain new Muslims, Muslims in the company, in the company of, of the Prophet would say, would say that we would also want to have that and where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we?
we go to ajmer oh ulal yeah yeah lots of shrines like that that's what is islam no 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 that's not what islam teaches us islam teaches us look look this kind of islam kufar of the of, of the period of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also had this kind of islam wala in sa'alahum man khalaqa as-samawati wal ardh وسخر الشمس والقمر لا يقولون الله ولا ان سالتهم من نزل من السماء ماء فاحيا به الارض بعد موتها لا يقولون الله ولا ان سالتهم من خلق كوب لا يقولون الله you know back in those days during the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there were these people who knew that allah azza wa jalla that has created them that gives them life that gives them food that can cause them to die that brings them provisions they knew everything they knew everything the problem they had was in al uluhiyya worshiping one true lord they believed in rububiyya they knew that allah azza wa jalla was the lord but they did not want to consolidate all the power to allah azza wa jalla they did not want to believe that they did not want to believe that so we muslims today of course living some a more or less like that we are also living life in such a way that you know one day we go to masjid the next day we go to a shrine a dargah a mazar one day we ask from allah azza wa jalla and the next day we ask from any peer what kind of life are we living So this is where we have to make fixes, and if we can make these fixes, inshallah, taala, we will be saved on the day of judgment. We will be prevented from what is called aslu dhuul, aslu dhuul, entry into the hellfire will, inshallah, taala, be prohibited. Will not be upon us. We will not enter the hellfire, inshallah, taala, if we have what is called tawhid, tawhid. and unfortunately today's muslims don't even know that islam is the 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 only religion you know a couple of things to talk to you about whether islam is the right religion or not what does islam mean what does islam mean anyone what does islam mean submission right submission now we know that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a muslim We know Ibrahim alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam. All the messengers were Muslim. All the prophets were Muslim. And if you don't quite know that, go read Surah Al-Shu'ara. Go read Surah Hud. Wa ila adin nakhahum huda. Kathabat qawm Nuh al Mursalin. Id qala lahum akhuhum Nuh al Atatqun. Then id qala lahum akhuhum adun adun al Atatqun. Qom ad. Id qala lahum akhuhum Salih al Atatqun. Id qala lahum akhuhum Lut al Atat. If you look at all of that. every single messenger every single prophet preached the very same thing monotheism every single prophet preached the very same thing called islam islam and what does islam mean submission let's let's try and understand what submission is from one one single example when allah azza wa jal created adam alayhi salam What did Adam alayhi salam what did Allah azza wa jalla say to Adam alayhi salam La taqraba hadhihi ash-shajarah Do not go anywhere near this this tree Allah azza wa jalla said And did Adam alayhi salam and Hawa not submit to Allah azza wa jalla they did فكلا منها رغدا حيث شئتما ولا تقربا هذه الشجرة. They were enjoying every single thing in Jannah except that just one command from Allah Azza wa Jalla: Don't go anywhere near this tree. They submitted, and eventually Satan led them. هل أدلك على شجرة الخلد وملك لا يبلى؟ So you only said, just go near the tree. Don't, don't, don't eat it from the fruit. So, 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 at until certain point in time, Adam alayhi salam did submit to Allah azza wa jalla. Now, now, is Adam alayhi salam a Muslim or not? Because he submitted to the will of Allah azza wa jalla. Was he a Muslim or was he not a Muslim? Okay. Okay. Another question. Can anyone else? 
be it a Christian, a Jew, or anyone else, claim that Adam alayhi salam was a, Je a, a Jew or a Christian? No, they can't. They can't. Allah Azza wa Jal talks about Ibrahim. Leave alone Adam. Ibrahim alayhi salam Allah Azza wa Jal talks about مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُودِيًّا وَلَا نَصْرَانِيًّا وَلَكَنْ كَانَ حَنِيفًا مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ So Ibrahim alayhi salam himself was neither a Jew nor a Christian. And, and one last thing, not the lesson, one last thing about trying to tell you that Islam is the, the religion, the only religion sent down by Allah Azza wa Tell me, is there any other scripture in which you find the name of their religion? Do you? Is there any other, any other religion on the face of the earth in their books, in their scriptures? Do you find the name of their religion mentioned? Inna dina inda Allahum Islam. Wa man yabtaghi ghayr al Islam dina. So many, so many times Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the word Islam in the Quran. Do they have in their books the names of their own religions? No, no. So that proves. While of course there are plenty of other things that can prove that Islam is the only religion. Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Samurihi maayatina fil lafati wa fiyon fasil hatta yata bayyana lahum annahu al-haq." Islam is the religion. It is another thing that we don't realize because we don't have time. We don't have time. We have time for like like the MLC asked you a question. Do you guys know how which school Ab Abdul Kalam? Went to, no one answered. Do you know KL Rahul? Everyone answered. Look at our priorities. Look at our priorities. Look at how much we know about Islam. Look at how much we know about the current affairs. Look at we know about, you know, what, what interests us. So we got to sit down, take a step back and understand the religion. And if we understand the religion well, inshallah, you know, on one occasion, on one occasion, there is this beautiful Tabari, Muhammad ibn Wasi' al-Azadi. On one occasion, Muhammad, Muhammad ibn Wasi' al-Azadi was in a group, in a gathering like this, with his, with his friends and, you know, relatives. He was sitting daydreaming, you know, like, like most of us daydream. He was daydreaming like this. So some of his friends shook him and said, Muhammad, what's wrong? Where are you lost? If someone asks us this question, what is our response? If one of us is daydreaming like this, sitting in the, in the hall, sitting in a gathering like this, but not listening to a lecture in his own world, someone shakes you up. Hey, what happened? What were you thinking? Oh, no, no, nothing, nothing. Yeah? Muhammad ibn Wasif was busy thinking about something. Someone shook him and said, Where are you? Not here with us? No, no. I was on the pun surat. I was on the surat. I was, I was imagining myself to be walking on that bridge which is over the hellfire. So this is how they lived their lives. They never, they never wanted to continue to exist, continue to live in this world. No, they always wanted to live for the next world. They always wanted. That's why, look at the story of Anas ibn al nadr More than 80 injuries on the whole body of his. But did it deter him from participating in the, in the wars? No. So that's the kind of, that's the kind of, Iman, that's the kind of life I'm talking about. And, and many of us do not even want to know anything about Islam. We, we are fine whatever we are doing. Like I said a little while ago, that the Prophet says, Whatever you have done doing in, the, in this life, you will actually die doing on the same thing. Which means, if a person is spending life nightlife in the pubs he will end his life over there if a person is dancing around if a person is singing doing anything else you know unlawful intimacies he will end up his life like that do you not know this 
We are aware of this. Because the Prophet وسلم, on one occasion said someone who was doing talbiyah. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik He died He died While he was on the way to Hajj The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Bury him just like that because he's going to be raised on the day of judgment Saying Talbiya He would be resurrected on the day of judgment Labbaik Allahumma labbaik What kind of life do you want to spend? And, 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 and while, while we are here, yeah, 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 yeah. You, know, you, know, you know, we want to go to pubs, pubs you know, you discos, know, discos, discos, nightlife. It is your friends, it is your friends actually that take you there. That's why the Prophet says, Al Maru ala dini khalili, fal yandur ahadun may yukhalil. Usually a person is on the religion of his friend. Al Maru ala dini khalili. A person is usually on the religion of his friend. Therefore, everyone must know who his friends are. You know Abu Talib? Abu Talib? While he was on the deathbed, who was next to him? He was on the deathbed. When in a few moments from now, he was going to be dead. He was going to be dead. So on one side of the bed, you have who? The chief of all the messengers, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sitting by his bed. Who? Who? Abu Talib. One side, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is there. On the other side of the bed, Abu Jahl, Abdullah ibn Abi Umayyah. Every time the Prophet told Abu Talib, Oh my uncle, say La ilaha illallah in my ear. Say just once in my ear. This is what Abu Jahl said. Hey, Abu Talib, are you going to be following the religion of this, this man who is your own nephew? You want to you want to say you, 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 you want to desert the religion that you and your forefathers live? What's wrong with you? Don't do that. Live on the very die on the religion you lived. Abu Talib, next to him was Prophet. He never uttered the kalima. While Abu Jahl died the death of a kafir, Abdullah ibn Abi Umayyah later on becomes a Muslim. So choose your friends wisely. Al khilaa'u yawm idin ba'dhum li ba'dhum adu. These friends that you're ready to sacrifice your life for, if they are not on monotheism, if they are not real good friends that can help you walk, that can help you walk on the path of Islam. These friends will become your enemies on the day of judgment. Yawma idhim ba'dhum li ba'dhun adhum. Illa al-muttaqeen. Except for those who are really righteous. So, are your friends righteous? Are your friends righteous? Do they tell you to go to salah? Hey, come, let's go to salah. Do they tell you to let's, let's try and memorize the Quran? Let's go in a gathering like this. Do they tell you? If they do, congratulations. And if they don't, if they don't, then I think you've got to be very careful. You've got to be very careful. Because on the day of judgment, read Surah Al-Safa. فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ قَالَ قَائِلٌ مِّنْهُمْ إِنِّي كَانَ لِي قَرِينَ يَقُولُ أَإِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُصَدِّقِينَ أَإِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا وَعِظَامًا أَإِنَّا لَمَدِينُونَ قَالَ هَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُقْتَلِعُونَ فَاطَّلَعَ فَرَآهُ فِي سَوَاءِ الْجَحِيمِ قَالَ إِنْ كِدْتَ لَتُرْدِينَ وَلَوْ لَا نِعْمَةُ رَبِّي لَكُنْتُ مِنَ الْمُحْضَرِينَ أَفَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَيِّتِينَ إِلَّا مَوْتَتَنَا الْأُولَى سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ Out of this world Out of this world Just listen to this bit 
If you have not quite listened to what I have said all this while, don't worry. But if you have not, if you don't listen to what I'm going to say now, you you know you're coming here is of no use. Listen to just this bit because I'm not saying that I have come to listen. No 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. Listen to what Surat Safat has to say about friends, friends, friends. We want to have friends. friends. We can't leave them. We are ready to sacrifice our lives for them. We are ready to die for them. We are ready to do anything for them. Friends, friends, these friends. فأقبل بعضهم على بعض يتسألون. Some of these friends on the day of judgment will be seated on recliners in in Jannah. They will be on the recliners. على الأرائك متكئون. They are sitting on their recliners and enjoying life in paradise, enjoying life in Jannah. Suddenly, one of them would say, hey, 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 wait, 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 wait. There was a friend of mine. Listen to this conversation. Suddenly, one of them would say, there was a friend of mine. He used to tell me, hey, do you believe in the Akhirah? Do you really believe? That Allah would raise us. When our bones, when our flesh, when we are buried, is all going to be dust. Allah would raise us then. So he was a little dicey. 50 50. He didn't quite believe. كان لي قرين يقول أئنك لمن المصدقين أيذا متنا وكنا ترابا وعظاما أئنا لمدينون. Then some of the other people would say to him after he says that I had a friend like this who used to say like this. Some of his friends would say in Jannah. هل أنتم مطلعون؟ Hey, do you want to check where he is? Then they look into the hellfire. There is a bridge between Jannah and Jahannam. From outside, from right in, in the Jannah. From right within the Jannah, you can look over. He's there, he's there. Yaqulu, Qala in kitta laturdi. Oh my God. He's here. I had almost believed him. I had almost believed him. If I had listened to him that day, I would be with him now. Thank God I did not listen to him. That's why Allah saved me and I'm here in Jannah. If Allah had not had bounties upon me, his fadl upon me, his rahmah upon me, his mercy upon me, I would have been amongst those people. Then, then he says, The biggest success is this. Yes, yes, yes. That's the biggest success. If we are looking for success here, I want to be a rich man. I want to be a renowned doctor. I want to be a famous engineer. So be it. Be. There's no harm. So long as you're on the principles of monotheism. So long as you're following Tawheed. So long as your Islam is intact. But if there is anything that you have to choose between Islam and these things, choose, choose Islam because this is what this guy said. After he says, Inna lahu al he realized, wow, that friend nearly had gotten me with him into the hellfire. Allah saved me. This is the biggest success. Therefore, he says, therefore, he has a wasiyah for us. For this kind of success, you, 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 all of us have to work, have to do all righteous deeds. <laughs> you know, Ibrahim alayhi salam, all of us know, what's the nickname of Ibrahim alayhi salam? Khalil Allah. Ah, Khalil Allah. Just listen to this. Ibrahim alayhi salam did not have a son until he was 80, 90 years old. He did not have a son. Finally, when Allah Azza wa granted him Ismail alayhi salam, falamma balagha ma'ahu sa'ya, when he was just about the age of running around with him, 
Allah Azza wa Jal tells him, I want you to sacrifice this, this, this son that you have longed to have. I want you to sacrifice this son of yours. Allah Azza wa Jal didn't just call Ibrahim alayhi salam his friend. Friends, I told you just a little while ago, we are ready to sacrifice anything for the case for, for our friends. Allah Azza wa Jal's love was so much in the heart of Ibrahim alayhi salam that he did not for a moment allow the love of Ismail alayhi salam to penetrate into his heart. And he said, yes, I'm ready to sacrifice. I'm ready to sacrifice Ismail alayhi salam in your cause, O Allah Azza wa Jal. Although I know that this, was, this is the only son I have. Although I know that this is the son that I've got after about 80 years of married life. I'm ready. I'm ready to sacrifice. Can we? Allah Azza wa Jal is not asking us to sacrifice ourselves. No. Allah Azza wa Jal is all Allah Azza wa Jal is asking us to sacrifice our bad deeds. Leave our girlfriends, boyfriends. Leave them, leave them, leave them. That's what Allah. We, we can't even make a small sacrifice of a bad deed. Someone smokes, smokes, leave it for Allah. Someone has the habit of eve teething, leave that, leave that. Someone listens to songs, watches movies, all the time, leave it for the sake of Allah. So, do you not want to be friends with Allah? Do you not want to grow, get close to the, 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 this friend of yours? This friend, this, this, this righteous deeds. You know, when we are buried into our graves, when we are buried into our graves, when the reckoning in the grave happens, if we have done enough righteous deeds, listen to this, if we have done enough righteous deeds, a beautiful, handsome looking man comes to us and tells us, in fact, says, hey, open the window of Jannah, you know, decorate his bed, let him continue to be, enjoy this life here in the world of Barzakh. So this man who is buried in the grave says, Mananta, who are you? In me, Amaluka Saleh. I am your righteous deed. I am your righteous deed. We will have that righteous deed as our friend in the graveyard, in our grave. And by the way, when we talk about graves like this, all of us think that, oh, those three questions, huh, they are very easy. Man Rabbuka, Madinuka, Man Nabiyuka. No, 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 no. Innakum. Because the Prophet says, Wa uhiya ilayya innakum tuftaluna fi adha fi fi al-quburi mithla fitnatin qariban fitnatin dajjah. إنكم لتفتنون في القبور مثل أو قريبا من فتنة الدجال. You know who the Jal is. When the Jal, that's why Allah Azza wa Jal. You know that's why the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم always said, اللهم إني أعوذ بك من فتنة المسلمين في الدجال. So when the Jal is here, when when the Jal is here, سبحان الله, it's going to be out of this world. Whoever doesn't have any iman will easily fall prey to him. So such a such a person, yeah. Or, uh, that's why the Prophet ﷺ says, when the jal is going to be here, he is going to get the rains to fall on barren lands. He is going to get the vegetations to come up, the produce to come up. He is going to you know kill someone and make him you know and, uh, and bring him to life again. These are the powers he will have. People will believe him. People will believe him. That's the kind of problem one will have in the graveyard, Allah Azza wa Jalla. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, "Inna kum la tuftanuna fi fi al quburi mithla aw qariban min fitnati dajjal." It's not going to be easy. Man Rabbu ka, ma dinu ka, man Nabiyu ka. There is there are those young boys sitting here. They they can answer this question. Man Rabbu. If you teach them for five minutes, they can answer this question. Man Rabbu ka, Rabbi Allah. Ma dinu ka, Dini al Islam. It's not going to. Man Rabbu ka. Oh, I was not sure. Madinuka. Terrifying questions. Intimidating people. Those two angels. It's, it's not easy. Unless we have walked on the path of Islam. The hereafter, which begins from, from Sakarat actually, is not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. And one last thing. I only have two minutes of school. One last thing. 
Don't disobey your parents. Two things can bring your punishment. Two things. If you have wronged someone, if you have done zulm on someone, and if you have disobeyed your parents, immediate tabartor, immediate punishment. So don't disobey your parents. Look at what Isa alayhi salam said. وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَتِي وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْنِي جَبَّارًا شَقِيًّا I was made to be righteous to my parents. I wasn't made to be tyrant, to be arrogant, to be wretched on my parents. And you know the, 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 the name Uwais Al-Qarni? Uwais Al-Qarni? You know, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu is a companion, second caliph. Uwais Al-Qarni is just a tabi'i, yeah? Like, like that. He is not a companion. Uwais Al-Qarni is not a companion. Yet, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Hey Umar, look out for Uwais Al-Qarni. If he meets you someday, go tell him to seek forgiveness for you. Huh? You are asking Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu to go search where Umar al-Qarni, Uwais al-Qarni is. And if you meet Uwais al-Qarni, go tell Umar, Uwais al-Qarni, Oh Uwais, can you please say to Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive me? Out of this world. I can't get in, enter the details of this. Ulama say that he was told to do so because Uwais was righteous to his parents. That's the level of being nice to your parents. Every single time Allah Azza wa Jal has talked about parents in this in, in the Quran, He has equated it with Tawheed. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَاعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِاللَّهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا قُلْ تَعَالَوْا وَاتْلُوا مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا أَنْ يَشْكُرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيْكَ So parents in your life are very very important. Don't disobey them. Don't disrespect. There are some companions who would not eat food in front of their parents. And one last thing, one last thing. Haya, modesty is your ornament. Not just women's. Modesty is the ornament of us as well. I, I can't recall the name of that companion who once said, you know, while I'm bathing, now, nowadays, how do we bathe? We have a shower, huh? all naked. We enjoy the shower. That companion says that I would sit and bathe and I would hesitate in the dark, in the dark, the bathroom is dark, I'm bathing, after I have completed taking a shower, bathing, I would be shy to get up naked like this, I would wrap the clothes and get out. I do not want to dis, you know, be, be, be unmodest to Allah Azza wa Jalla. I want to show my modesty to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Another companion says, another companion says, while Allah Azza wa Jalla has forgiven, because Radhi Allah wa Anhum, right? Radhi Allah wa Anhum, Radhi Anhum. While Allah Azza wa Jalla has forgiven my, de my, my wrong deeds, but I still do not make eye contact with Allah Azza wa Jalla because as Saifu, I have disobeyed Allah Azza wa Jalla. So let's not. Let's not disobey Allah Azza wa Jal. Then let's have modesty. In the name of fashion today, there are so many of us that are doing so many things that are not modest. Modesty is our ornament. Let's not lose it. Let's not lose it. May Allah Azza wa Jal get us to understand the significance of living the religion in today's times. Today. Everyone is against Islam. Everyone wants us dead. Look at what, what's happening over there. They are killing children because they do not want to see the morrow. That's what Firaun did. That's what Yudabihu abna'ahum wa yastahiyya nisa'ahum. Please, realize that Allah Azza wa Jal has created all of you as Muslims. فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Don't die except as Muslims. Except as Muslims. May Allah Azza wa Jal get us to understand, to live, and to die for Islam. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.